creating a scatter plot the old school way. In this lesson, we're going to show how to graph data using a scatter plot. We're calling this old school because in this lesson, we're going to set our graphing calculator aside and use instead a pencil and a ruler. If we look at a set of data, it is hard to make a decent analysis just from that set of data. In a table or as coordinate pairs, they are pretty much just numbers without meaning. It's when we graph them to create a picture or image that we can gain a much better understanding. The first thing to consider is what you have to graph with. You may have an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet with 1 quarter inch grid lines like this one, and that would have 44 squares by 34 squares to use. I think it's important to consider mainly a couple things in planning your scatter plot. First, you'll need to have it large enough to see your data well. Leave enough room on the margin for labeling axes and a, a title if needed. For this graph, we'll be using a 20 by 20 grid for our area of squares. We'll first look at this data, the current in amps on the left side of the table. Normally, we would want to scale for this data on the horizontal or independent quantity axis. Since the data numbers or domain are 2 through 20, and we have 20 squares to work with, we'll use 1 amp per square. We label the horizontal axis amps, leaving enough room for numbers above. I almost forgot it's a good idea to draw the axes of the graph. I usually use a pencil with a ruler. Now we'll mark numbers on the horizontal axis. I think a good idea is to place a mark with a number every five squares. Although I had students number every two squares and it looked just fine. It's important to have your axis properly labeled so you can communicate your data to others through your graph as well as to help you remember what you're looking at. Next, we'll look at the dependent data on the right side of the table. We could go with one grid for every ohm of resistance, but that would only use the very bottom of our available graph paper and may not allow us to interpret our data very well. We could go up by two grids for every ohm, and while that would work better, we still have a lot of unused graphable area. If we go for four grid squares for every ohm, we use our graph surface much better. Then we can fill in the numbers, one ohm for every four squares. I had students fill in for every 0.5 ohms and it worked fine. There are no hard and fast rules for how labeling and scaling should be done. Now we can plot the points. This first point we'll plot by going to two amps here on the horizontal axis, then going up here all the way to 4.5 ohms, then marking our point. We go through the same process and mark all the data as points. Now that we have a scatter plot, we can use it to evaluate the relationship. Even though the data shows negative correlation, it's not linear. This blue line doesn't fit the data, and we cannot draw a line to do so. We could draw individual line segments between the points like this, not perfect, but much better than a single line of best fit. But even better would be to draw a curve to fit the points, something like this one. And while no hand-drawn line or arc will be perfect, it does much better represent the relationship such that it can be used to correlate current and resistance. For instance, if we go up to 7 amps here from the horizontal axis, we see that our resulting resistance will be about 1.25 ohms on the vertical axis. Here's the work of one of my students, Luce using the same data. Note that she doesn't have the units for amps or ohms. It was because they were not given in the assignment. Here's the work of another of my students. While he is a good student and has the right idea, note how the scale changes on the vertical axis. There are five squares between 0 and 1, but there are other places where he uses different am amounts, like between 4 and 5 where he uses just three squares. Be careful to mark the units proportionately, the same number of squares for each unit. This has been a brief explanation of how to create a scatter plot. Thanks for viewing.